I shall not want. That's our promise. Live. That's the promise that lives over us. Our God, our provider, Jehovah, our provider. He's always meeting all of our needs, man. We shall not want. Acts 20 lets us already know that it's more blessed to give than to receive. So right now, y'all, we have the opportunity to worship our Father in giving. Let's pray over every seed that's going to be given. God, we thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to sow into your kingdom, Father. Thank you for your provision over us. Every gift that you've given us, Father, we ask that every home is blessed. This ministry is blessed. Your kingdom is blessed. The word that's coming forth is blessed, Father. And so as we release these gifts to you, we tell you thank you. Thank you for being God, our Jehovah, our provider, who lets us know that we shall not want. Father, we are cheerful givers, so we sow in this moment to your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, live. Let's worship our Father and give it. Well, good morning. Good morning, Live Church. This is the day the Lord has made. We are always going to rejoice and be glad in it. Put it in the chat right now. Live is live. Live is live. It's on and popping. I know that's old. They don't say that too much no more, but it is on and popping. It is Sunday morning, my favorite day of the week, the first day of the week. And we are here to give glory to God. Lord, we thank you for another day, another opportunity to encounter you, another opportunity to hear what you will have to say to this general body we call Limb Church. We pray that you speak in the name of Jesus. We pray that you heal, deliver, set free, save, provide. Just be God. Be God. And you are good. We love you today. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody say amen. Man, you can put it in the chat. That's you saying it back to me. Hey, man. Good morning, y'all. It's good to see y'all. Well, it's good for y'all to see. Well, y'all know what I'm saying. It was so good to see everybody last week. Our resurrection service was absolutely incredible. It was amazing. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you missed it, you did just that. You missed it. We had an amazing time. We had an amazing announcement as well. Y'all live, got somewhere to live. I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna go into that too much because I can run around this whole land. But we got somewhere to live. We got the keys. It is official. Uh, we are not renting anymore. We're not, but we are all owning now in the name of Jesus. So the process has begun to begin moving stuff in, cleaning stuff out, da 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 da, tearing down, building up. You know what I mean? All of that has begun. And thank you all so much for volunteering and all of your help to those of you who are serving in that capacity. We are extremely grateful for your generosity and may God bless you for sowing in to the Live Church Orlando. Okay, let's get into this word that I believe God wants us to share to you this morning. Very simple word, but I think it's powerful and it's going to really give us some perspective on life as we know it. The Lord has been dealing with me the last couple of days, actually since Resurrection Sunday, he's been dealing with me about the culmination of Easter Sunday and Resurrection Sunday and the finished work of Jesus Christ, right? Thank God he came, he was born, he bled, he died, all that great stuff. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord, for our sins. I'm so grateful his grace is released. One of the things that I want to point out, when Jesus rose, we said the graves of many other people were open. Many other people begin to walk the earth. We know that if, you, if they were dead, they begin to walk again. And we, we saw people come from death to life. That's amazing. Jesus appeared to his disciples in the closed room. I mean, the door was shut. He just appeared there. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, even if the door is shut, God can show up. That's a, that's, even if the door is shut, that does not mean you're shut out. God can still show up even if the door is closed. That's amazing. And he appeared to about 500 people after his resurrection. One thing I want to point out, y'all, this is what God is dealing with me about. When he rose, they said his, his clothes was folded and the napkin that was about his face was folded. So, <laughs> and I heard somebody say this, and this is an amazing thing, like when Lazarus uh, was dead and they had the grave clothes on Lazarus, Lazarus came forth out of the grave, but they had, the men had to lose him because he couldn't untie himself. But when Jesus got up, ain't nobody had to untie him. He broke loose. And I feel that, y'all. I feel that things that have had you bound, whether for three days or three years or 30 years, you're about to break loose out of some bondages and some, 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 some wounds and some hurts 
And some things that have had you bound for years or even days, you're gonna break out of that thing. I feel a breakthrough coming, y'all. I'm telling you, just receive it in Jesus' name and put breakthrough in the chat. If you're in need of a breakthrough, you feel tied down, you feel stuck, you feel like you can't, you don't have the, the, the movement that you can have, you don't have the thought, you can't break. Yo, breakthrough is coming. I feel that, y'all. Put breakthrough in the chat. I, I don't see it enough. I don't, I'm gonna wait till I see one of them. Breakthrough, breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough. He's the Lord of the breakthrough. He's the God of a breakthrough. When you hit a brick wall, that's not it. He can break through. You can, I mean, he is the God of the breakthrough. And I feel that coming, y'all. Feel it coming. He put the napkin that was about his face and he folded it and he put it down. That in Jewish customs was a sign, right? So if you ate dinner in a Jewish home, if you folded your napkin and put it on the table, that was a sign in their culture. To, it was basically inviting yourself back. In Jewish tradition, in Jewish culture, when you ate the dinner and you enjoyed your time and you loved the fellowship, you would fold your napkin and put it back on the table to kind of invite yourself back or to say, I would love to come back or to say, I'm coming back. Jesus folded the napkin, put it on the tomb to let you know I'm not here, but I'm coming back. Good God Almighty, one of the last things he said to the people before the cloud received him and he began to just rise up in the sky was, behold, I come quickly. That's the last thing he said. It wasn't in his finish, it wasn't into the head. One of the last thing he said was, I'm coming back. And I don't think a lot of believers live with the consciousness or the awareness that Jesus is soon to come. I feel like my grandma right now and my great grandma, because now all they used to preach was rapture ready and get ready. But it's real and it's true. If every other promise of Jesus is true, surely this one is as well. One of the last things he left us was yet another promise. Yet another prophecy. I'm coming back. I'm going to prepare a place for you, but I'm coming back. How many of us think of that? How many of us consider that in our day to day? How many of us are anxiously awaiting the return of Jesus. Whoa, the Bible says the believers are supposed to be looking forward to the time that he returns. Not so comfortable in this world, not so cool, chilling in this world, but there should be contentment, but yet I know this ain't it. This is not our home, we're just pilgrims passing through. <laughs> this barren land, my grandma used to say. This barren land, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. Put it in the chat, y'all. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Yes, he died for our sins. Glory to God. Woo! That's gone. We got favor in life. Thank you, Jesus. But he's coming back. I remember Daniel who had, who had to interpret the dream for the king. And uh, he said, I see a statue of a man with a gold head and a silver chest and brass loins and iron legs and feet mixed with iron and clay. We talked about this many times uh, in our times together. And those represent different kingdoms that will reign over the people of God, right? The gold represented Babylon. They enslaved the Jews. They enslaved the people of God. The culture of that day, the world system was that of Babylonian culture. Then after that, Persia took over Babylon. So Persians, the Persians enslaved the, the Jews and the people of God. After that, it was the Greeks, the Grecians. They took over and they began to enslave uh, uh, the, the people of God and the Jews. And then of course, Rome. By the time Jesus shows up, the Jews are under the jurisdiction of the Roman people. Now, we are in that feet and clay. We're somewhere in the feet and clay. We're somewhere in the mix. You're gonna start to see a whole lot of mixing. The iron is still there. Right? The Roman, the Roman Catholic, there's a lot of Catholicism and a lot of Roman systems that are still in place. There's a lot of Greek systems still in place. All Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the days of our week are from Greek mythology. The days of our, the, the names of our monks, Greek mythology. Uh, 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 so we still are under the philosophies and thought processes of some of these other kingdoms. That's why you gotta learn to be in this world, but not of it because the whole world is governed by other gods. Good God Almighty. So we are somewhere in the feet in the clay. You'll start to see a mix now. What you're gonna to start to see is the merging. 
You're going to start to see the merging of faiths. You're going to start to see the merging of lifestyles. You're going to start to see the merging of cultures. You're going to start to see this merge. It's going to look like unity. And it's going to feel like togetherness. But it's actually a smearing and a diluting of the potency, purity, and holiness of the kingdom of God. So be careful. Love everybody. But don't become like everybody. Because there's a mixture happening now. There's a mixture. There's interfaithism they're talking about. Where there's going to be one faith and interfaithism and everybody's just going to agree that everyone's accepted. And that's not the praise the Lord. But just stay woke, y'all. Be sober. Be vigilant, Right? <laughs> but there's another stone coming. Daniel saw that the whole statue was standing. But a stone that was cut out of a mountain that no man can cut, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Came and struck the feet and the clay, the last days, the end times. It struck that. So Jesus is coming and he's going to strike the jurisdiction and the government and the ways and the culture and how we're living. And the whole statue crumbled into dust and pieces and the wind blew the dust away. Nothing was standing there but the rock, who is Jesus, who is the kingdom, who is his way. And that became the mountain. Man, this, this dream, this vision is, is amazing. Essentially, what I believe he's saying is so many thought processes and, and cultures and ways of thinking were the way. Now we're in a hip hop culture right now. You know what I'm saying? We benefit from it. I'm dressed like it. OK, it's in the world, but not of it. Different cultures ruled the world. But Jesus is coming to establish his kingdom culture and it's going to crush every culture that ever existed. Not just the feet and the clay, it's going to crush the iron, it's going to go back and crush the bronze, go back and crush the silver, go back and crush the gold. It's going to crush every other king, hallelujah, every other dominion, every other kingdom that ever existed. Jesus Christ is going to take his rightful place on the throne and he's going to run the world again. Before that happens, let the rock crush the throne of your heart. Before this happens outwardly, it should be happening for the believer inwardly. His way should come and crush the Johnson's way. I, how I used to live, how I used to think, what I used to believe. That rock should have been at you if you're the believer. This should have been happening in your life. Has it happened to you? Have you been crushed? Have your ways been crushed to smithereens by God's way? Has he totally blew up your spot? Has he to did you totally think, oh, I thought this was right. But that's totally wrong. If you haven't had that moment, I almost question your salvation because he brings us out of darkness into light. And if any man be in Christ, I feel like running across my property. He's a new creature. All things are crushed and all things are become new. Every crushing is not bad. Sometimes the rock of God got to crush the stubborn heart. Sometimes the rock of God got to crush our stubborn habits. Sometimes. God comes and crushes the old you so he can establish the new you in him. Let him crush you. Crying over relationships, it's okay. We've been man doing for a night. Let him crush you. Crying over lost opportunities, that's all right. We've been man doing for a night. Let him crush you. Crying over what you thought you should, let him crush you. Let that heart be broken because he's only breaking it to build it back up stronger in him. Hallelujah. He said, I'm coming again. He's coming back. And I've just been thinking about that. I've been living with that awareness for a little bit. Let me give you a couple of scriptures, right? The last days will be like the days of Noah. We know that. You're going to be eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. The last days, people are going to be turning it up. They're going to be partying. Lawlessness will be the culture. Lawlessness will be the culture. There, America, oh, this world is about to legislate lawlessness. They're about to make a lawlessness legal. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Are y'all trying to feel me right here? What I mean by lawlessness is against the, the laws of God, right? Outside of his laws. They're about to make that legal. So it's going to be like the days of Noah. They're going to be eating, they're going to be chilling until the rain starts falling. And they're all going to be like, oh my goodness, it was true what they were saying. No Christians was right. Lamb was right. Grandma was right. But it's going to be too late. Don't let it be too late for you. And anytime. You speak a warning. It's not for fear. It's for wisdom. Because fear and wisdom are almost twins. Oh, y'all, excuse me. I'm trying to... Ha! Ah, not the scary fear, but that fear 
emotionally sometimes it's necessary for wisdom. Otherwise, you'll put a knife in the socket. Otherwise, you put your hand in the alligator's mouth. So you got to be like, that thing could take me out. That's the fear. The wisdom say, I ain't messing with it. So fear the Lord. Yeah, because he's the only one that can take you out. So wisdom says, serve him. So wisdom and fear are kind of the same. I'm not speaking fear of your life. God's not giving us the spirit of fear. But he does say, fear the Lord. And he says, fear is the beginning of wisdom. Y'all play with me this morning. Fear is the beginning of wisdom. So you need to fear, respect, or honor something to the point where you adjust your behavior. That's what was happening with your parents. Boy, if you don't, my dad used to just hold his hand up like this. I didn't know if he was praising or about to hit me. I ain't like going to church with him. Because <laughs> I feared what he was able to do with that right hand. So it made me or helped me adjust my behavior, my attitude, my thought process. So sometimes God allows some crushing to let you know, all right now, I love you and I'm your father, but I don't play and I mean what I say. To bring us in line, to get us in order in the name of Jesus. So they're going to be wilded out. Lawlessness is going to run and then that rain gonna start falling. And everybody's gonna get caught out in the rain. Don't get caught in the rain. <laughs> That's good. You can write that in the chat. Don't get caught in the rain. Noah preached for hundreds of years, rain is coming. Nobody believed it. And it's okay, I, I think it's okay to not believe it. But to mock it, that's another thing. Like to make Resurrection Sunday this year the day of transgender visibility was not a wise thing. I, 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 to, to, to mock that, and I know it's about March 31st, it's not about Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, it wasn't about that, it's about the date, March 31st, but it just so happened to fall on. You, you understand what I'm saying? So I felt a little mockery in that. So it's one thing to be like, I don't believe it's gonna rain, but to mock it, oh, that's, that's a dangerous place. I'd rather you not believe in God than to mock him. It's a dangerous place. 2 Timothy says this, y'all. Let's go into it really quick. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And I'm almost done. Give me 10 more minutes. I hear y'all laughing in the chat. Don't do that. 10 minutes. Don't do that. All right. 2 Timothy says this. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, I'm reading from the NLT verse, in the last days there will be very difficult times. Well, the Bible says perilous times shall come. Hard times are gonna come. Well, why is hard times coming? Because the government gonna shut down again? Because people gonna start killing and murdering? Because there's gonna be all types of sicknesses and disease? Why is hard times coming in the end? Timothy, tell us. Oh, I'll tell you. For well, people will only love themselves and their money. So times are gonna get hard because people will love themselves and their money. Why times gonna get hard, Timothy? I can't tell you. They're going to be boastful and proud, scoffing at God. That's the part I'm talking about. They're going to be disobedient to parents and ungrateful. These things makes times hard. These things makes the days perilous. If you're disobedient, if you're a lover of money, uh, uh, and, and you love yourself, all that stuff, you make life hard for yourself. Ungrateful, they will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving, those two things. If you have no love and you are not forgiving, you are helping to escalate the end times. Love somebody, forgive somebody. That's it. And they will slander others and have no self-control. Man, this is Timothy talking, but it sounds like Pastor Timothy last week in church. It sounds so recent. It will be unloving, unforgiving, slander others, have no self-control be cruel and hate what is good. That is dangerous. That is dangerous. We know we're in them times right now. They will hate what is good. So why would be just bad? So they're gonna normalize bad, normalize hate, normalize evil, normalize everything against God. Y'all better wake up in here. It is not okay to have that mindset. It is not okay to, to go along with the flow or the course of the thinking of this world. You gotta be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm gonna talk about that in two seconds. They will be cruel to, okay, they will betray their friends. 
I just wanted to say loud on it. I didn't freeze. No, I didn't freeze. I froze. They, they will betray their friends. Be reckless. Oh, man. Be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. I wish that was it. But Timothy kept writing because Paul, I'm sure, was talking to him. And he was just writing what Paul was saying. He said they will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. King James says they will have the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Oh my goodness, that's the worst one to me. Well, all of them are bad, actually. All of them are, are horrible. But to act godly, but to not have the power from within, to have a religious, uh, what is that? Facade, thank you, BJ. To have the religious facade, but don't have the spirit and the power from within is a very dangerous thing. It says stay away from people like that. They hypocrites. I'm not talking flawless. I'm not talking perfect. I'm talking authentic. Like if you really got them, you really got them. You don't have to act. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to have the clergy collar. You don't have to say, that's my seat. I'm elder this and I'm, I'm sit. No. They will be religious, but deny the power. What's the power? I believe the power is the power to change. I read a quote today that said, you had faith enough to be saved, but have you surrendered enough to be changed? Just let that sit for a minute. That was good. And whoever said that online, thank you. I forgot who said it. I should have scrolled and got you credit. You had the faith enough to be saved from sin, but do you have the, the surrender enough to be changed? That's the difference between salvation and born again. Talk about that later. I gotta get out of here, man. So check this out, y'all. Second Peter, then I'm gonna get out of here. Second Peter, chapter three, verse, t verse 10. So Peter's talking about the end times as well. He talked about how, he, he, he said, they delivered, they, what did he say? They willingly, they were willingly ignorant. Those two things back to back was like, they were willingly ignorant. Usually if you're ignorant, you just don't know. They chose not to either remember or they chose not to even learn. When you're willingly ignorant, you don't even want wisdom. You don't even want the knowledge. You don't even want to know God's perspective on it. That's a callous heart to be willingly ignorant. Say, don't be that ignorant. Put it in there, y'all. Don't be that ignorant. Don't be that ignorant. I want to know, even if it's going to crush me, even if it's going to challenge me, I want to know God's will for my life. I want to know God's will for my family. I want to know God's will, period. I want to know his perspective. I don't I got much time. Okay. So 2 Peter, verse 3, I mean, chapter 3, verse 10 says this, but the day of the Lord come as unexpectedly as a thief in the night. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise. He basically saying the heavens are going to pass away, the earth is going to pass away, and it's all going to be burned up with fire. And the fire is going to consume everything that is not pure. All of our accomplishments, all of your the letters behind your name and the letters in front of your name, all of your money in your bank, all of your all of your successes, all of that. It's going to, all of your, everything is going to be burned up and tried in the fire. And the only thing that's going to be left is the things that were pure. So even if you made billions of dollars and your heart wasn't pure, that whole heap will be nothing. Good God Almighty. Lord, let me do three things that I really meant than 300 that I did. Lord, let me have real impact with the few than to have, try to have general impact heartlessly. I want to be pure. I want it to mean something. Imagine your works, your words, your conversation, your job, your behavior being tried by fire to see how pure you were. Not perfect. You're going to be purely angry. But I'm saying to see how pure you were. You got to think about that as we consider Jesus is coming back. As we consider he's coming soon. Your works, your attitude, your behavior, what you do. Make sure you purify that, man. My last scripture today. Oh, I missed it. All right, here we go. My last scripture, 2 Peter 3, verse 14 and 15. It says, and so dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. 
and remember, remember, remember that? Our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you. So he says, while you're waiting, make sure you live pure and peaceful lives. Pure and peaceful. Peaceful, horizontally, pure, vertically. When you live your life, live peaceful here with everybody else and live pure here with God, all right? Your heart, everything you say, be pure with God because we're waiting for, he says, in light of that, in light of thinking, yo, Jesus is coming soon and I don't even know when. It could be a thief in the night. It could happen right now while I'm, while I'm doing the stream or while you're watching it. We don't know. He can come back at any, so with that in mind, live peacefully with everybody. Stop arguing. Stop all the, uh, the backbiting. Stop all the nagging. Stop all the going back and forth. Stop all the starting trouble. Stop all the getting smart. Stop all the sarcasm. Yo, just cut it. Live peacefully. Stop starting. Stop starting. Stop starting. Stop starting. Stop, stop starting stuff. Peacefully. Live peacefully and purely. Purely. Lord, purify me. I'm sick of doing things with different intent. Purify. So peacefully and purely. Pure. Ah, pure. Ah, purely. As we await the coming of our Lord and Savior. And the last point that I love that he said, God is patient so we can be saved. Good God Almighty. He's not slack concerning, concerning his promises. That's what Second Peter was saying. I'm going to keep my word, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time because I want to give you time to change. I want to give you time to be saved. I want to give you time to get better. Because if I kept my word right now, you wouldn't even fall under the blessing side. <laughs> So God's patience is an extension of his mercy. Good God. God is not soft. Everybody who's doing evil, they're going to get theirs. But they ain't got it yet because he's wanting them to change. He's having mercy. Even the one you hate, God ain't get, get them yet because he wants them to change and be saved. My dad used to always say, plan as though you'll live forever, but live like he coming tonight. There's amens all out here. Y'all can't hear them, but they said, put that in the chat. Amen. Plan as though you'll live forever, but live as though he's coming tonight. I'm going to say that one more time and I'm going to go. Live. I love y'all. Jesus is soon to come. Yes, it's a warning, but more of a prophecy, more of a celebratory. Our king is coming. I'm sick of the oppression of the law and the culture of this way. That's why it says, love not the world, yo. Neither the things that are in the world, because I'm about to flip all that. Plan as if you'll live forever, but live as if the Lord is coming back tonight. He's coming back, he's coming soon, and he's coming for his bride. He's coming for us who should be waiting, awaiting his return. It shouldn't be a scary thing for the believer. It should be an exciting thing. We should be rolling out the red carpet of righteousness. Whoa. We should be rolling out the red carpet of purity with our lifestyle, with our conversation, with our thought process. That should be like, even so, come Lord Jesus. We're anxiously awaiting the return of our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is Jesus and he is Lord. We love you today. We're excited about your return. We are not, we're not so tethered in and with this world that the thought of you returning scares us or disappoints us. Oh no, I want to get married first. I want to do this first. I want to do this. No, you coming back is our greatest anticipation while we're alive. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, prepare our hearts and we receive your return with praise, worship, sanctification, purification, all the fruit of the spirit, Lord. Help us be ready, be blameless, be without spot or without wrinkle. Amen. Liv, thank you so much. We love you permanently. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your generosity. And as always, we cannot wait to see you again face to face in the presence of our God. Be blessed. Family, be blessed. Until next time, the Lord is with us. Therefore, we will not fail. Live.